Good morning, everybody. I'm in northern Minnesota. We got all the leaves blooming. It's gorgeous out. Uh, we're on a job site with uh, both vans here. It's pretty huge. It's 12,000 square feet today. We're going to clean convention center, banquets. Um, there's, Courtney had a great question, so I'm going to address that versus try to write it all. On employees and expanding your business, growing. While I do a walkthrough here, you can see what we're doing today. So, if you consider 12,000 square feet, you yourself would have to wand this. That's really difficult, for one thing. We are going to zipper it, but even if you had to clean it by yourself, move all these tables. Well, I'm going to just do this again so you can see. Tables and chairs. Do all this work yourself. Think about 12,000 square feet, maybe wanding. Good moment, 500 square feet an hour, maybe 700, maybe 1,000. Okay, think about the hours. Uh, so those of you also bidding on jobs, you got to think what it's going to cost you, how many hours. By the way, you can't see it really great, but that's Minnesota lakes out there, Sugar Lake. Okay, um, yes, I have some employees. Actually, right now, there's currently, I even have a gentleman, Don, behind me, married to... Uh, my wife's aunt, Lorraine, he came out of retirement and he's out cleaning. He's from Texas, been a truck driver, and he's in better shape than most of us out there. He's 76 years of age, can run that wand like no tomorrow, he runs marathons, the whole deal. So here's also the boys in the background here. Okay, that's Aaron and Zach. Yeah. This convention center is huge. Okay, so again, we're zippering it. We have that convenience, we make it happen. Now to the employee part. So with employees, when do you decide to get an employee? My wife had to kind of force me to get an employee because it was late days, late nights. We're fortunate enough. Our community is 11,000 people about. We're also in the outer lakes areas. Like this year, we're a little out of town, about 5 to 10 to 15, 20 miles or some areas. We have another about 8,000 people population, so my business draws from less than 20,000. My county that I'm in, Itasca County in uh, Minnesota, based out of Grand Rapids, Minnesota, you have about 43,000 people. Now it's a lot of remote areas, not a lot of areas we go and we service. The employee part, when my wife says you need help because you can't keep up, and we were not necessarily losing money, because we're, we're getting a good rate for what we're doing, but it was people were willing to wait two and three weeks for us. Then some people weren't as patient because our customer base expanded. So what do you do when you've got those people that you're their only cleaner? They are only thinking they want you. Here's a method I did, and it's a little different, and I've spoke on this topic a few times, but. We started running both these vans due to my daughter, who's married to Aaron, who's our main guy now. She's a beauty school dropout. She needed a job. And so, all right, I'll employ her, come out and, you know, take care of the tasks, help move furniture, you know, tug around the hoses here and there and uh, help tabbing and keeping the little old ladies busy while I cleaned. Then we, we started bringing both vans because she didn't want to be at work all day. So I thought, all right, if we're going to do that, let's set up the second van. So I've got one up top, i got one down below. And she could wand, take care of it, and she was running. At that time, we were running, oh, the big boy wands, the green horns, and um, we were running two-and-a-half-inch hose, the vans to the door, and two inch. So, you know, we don't cut anything back. Then my daughters got tired of working for me, so they started bringing home guys. So then the boys were, we started still going two vans on a lot of jobs because customers were used to seeing you, Okay. Then it got to a point where the customers were used to seeing me and seeing the boys. And then it got to a point where, I'm sorry, I'm too busy to just get over there right now, but can I send Aaron or Austin or Aaron or Zach? And they send them over. Yes, please, because we need it immediately. Wonderful. So they'd notice is that, you know, even if the guys were there cleaning and only one van, say, set up, uh, they were used to the guys. They saw the guys were doing the cleaning, could do the work. Now they're very used to seeing the guys. The other part of it is now we get requests for the guys. The cute guys, are you sending the cute guys over? Uh, I had one I showed up uh, last year. Or the cute guys coming over to you today? No, sorry, they're stuck on another job. You're just stuck with the fat guy here. So how the business then evolved eventually here, over time, a year to two of both fans on every job, we also found out we were making more money, and it was costing us less money because 
even though the vans were going the same spot, if you're sending one van one way, one van the other way, you're still having some of the same costs. But we got to a point now where we can split up a lot of times the vans, but we'll show up on big jobs, both vans. All right, so the concept of getting those employees, you just have to get in your mindset that you're going to take them on. Are they always perfect? No. Are, are self personally perfect? No. We still get callbacks, we get some things to fix. What you do is you're creating another person who is similar to you, can be able to be your spokesperson and clean as well as you. And guess what? A lot of times the, your employees are going to clean better than you guys. I even learned from my daughter some things, some tagging and blocking and doing some things. I looked at my oldest daughter, why'd she do it that way? Because it just seemed natural. I've been doing it a different way for years. I've learned from employees. I've had some employee issues where some people didn't last. What do you do with that? You look for another employee. You keep looking. Do you hire him right away? No, it took me again two months, three months to find Zach here after another employee didn't work out for us. Uh, Austin left, went to the Twin Cities, and um, because of that, uh, he's actually going to be a carpet cleaner now again, it sounds like, down there. But, you know, brings up a topic. Are you worried about training your competition? Don't be worried about it. Uh, you're still you. You still have your customer base. And guess what? It makes you a better cleaner yet, too, because you got to stay on your A game and up your skills. So again, employees, I encourage you to look at it. Do you want to be an 80 truck thing? No, don't, you know, the, I know of an 80 truck company that the guy says, I wish you would have stopped at 15. And actually he's got three of those companies. Um, no, you get too big, you know, if you have that venture, great. But if you get too big, you know, you've got other problems every day. You're gonna have other people helping you. My personal, for ourselves, this is our only personal wants we're happy with two trucks and it services our area well because there is slow times in the winter. You're still paying these guys. Sometimes you're paying these guys just to be pushing a broom, cleaning trucks, do whatever. But you get emergency calls, you need them out. All right. So employees is a different game. I would encourage you, first of all, try one. Try one with you. Get it to the point then when you decide you want to expand, you got that second truck as a backup truck. Then you, that's how I started. Then you start taking the backup truck out. You're finding now it's you're going to have two needed every day great trucks, working trucks. I haven't bought a third backup. Um, at this point, it would cost me money. We've run our numbers. All right, so I know this video is getting long, but to address that, I am a, I'm a fan of employees most days. My employees are great. My employees become like family. Some people have different opinions on that. Do I want it like a family member? Do I not? We are a family owned and operated business. Until I got so big, if I wanted to, it would be different. But I'd still want my employees to feel welcome working for me. So guys, I hope that addresses a little bit. I do see a value. Those of you who are bust and tail, I'm 56. I'm still running wands, I'm still on a truck. I hear from other places, other forums, hey, you're still on a truck. I prefer to be, I like being out here. I don't have to be all the time. I'm in Florida a number of times in the winter time too. I have guys back making me money, making money doing it. Am I making a killing? No, I'm making a great living and my people, my employees are to a point they're making a, great, a good living, they're able to afford and purchase homes. So that's an important fact too. Can they make a living with you? There's ways to do that, we can help you out. Uh, I got people buzzing in like crazy here on the Facebook stuff, but there, sorry for the long video and the response. You might have more things you wanna talk about. I'll post this up. Guys, thanks again for being here. Courtney, thanks for the great questions and everybody. I sure do appreciate it. I'm going to get busy out there and make sure my people are doing well and having a good day.